seas rose, the sun scorched the earth, and the people fled. Some remained behind. Fuel. This is what happens when you mix the Road Warrior with Burnout Paradise. You get fuel for PS3, 360, PC. This is the Xbox 360 version. I have to admit, I was extremely surprised by this game because I expected it to be exactly like Dirt or Grid. And even though it is a single syllable, four letter word, fuel is nothing like Dirt or Grid. If you go into it expecting that, you'll be extremely surprised. It is, however, a lot like Burnout Paradise, except with bikes, ATVs, and Mad Max-style road warrior dune buggies. You can't strap anybody to the front of a ditch digger, though. Or was that a forklift? I don't remember. Either way, it was cool. And if you've never seen the road warrior, it's like Waterworld, except on land. And a whole lot better. This is an arcade-style driving game where you can create your own path from point A to point B, although there is one recommended to you if you pop up the GPS. There's a variety of different races, in fact, loads of races. This is a huge game. The weather effects and the lighting are really cool. They've done a nice job with that. Stylistically, it has that post-apocalyptic feel to it. And it's a very smooth game. The motion and the graphics look very similar to Dirt and Grid, although the game plays totally different. The game takes place on this huge map, and the packaging says 14,000 square kilometers, which is about what it feels like. It's just gigantic. You unlock sections of the map as you play through the game and you can explore them in a free drive mode or take part in career races or challenge races and there's an online racing component to the game as well. This game is jam-packed. If you like the way the game plays, it will last you a while because it's just got so much to do. You earn fuel when you win races and that's the equivalent of gold or credits or money and you buy vehicles with the fuel like crazy-ass trucks, ATVs, dune buggies, motorcycles. It's all very fictional, so don't expect a Nissan Skyline in there anywhere. If this is the post-apocalyptic future, then why is my truck not equipped with a rocket launcher? Instead, I'm forced to pass the vehicle in front of me the old-fashioned way, by ramming him off the road. If you'll notice on screen in the various races, sometimes I have the GPS up, sometimes I do not have it up. The GPS works very well, although it does clutter the screen with a lot of information. However, the first couple times you go through some of the challenge or career races, you might want it up there just so you can get a sense of where the checkpoints are. There's always trees or mountains or something blocking the view. And it's just a button click to get it on and off the screen. That's a really nice touch. I think I read somewhere this game has the largest playable area of any game ever, and it certainly feels like it. 5,000 square miles, 14,000 square kilometers. That GPS comes in handy. You could spend weeks driving in circles and exploring and finding vista points and locations, or you can just concentrate on the races. And there's a huge variety of races. You don't have to drive on any specific Path. You don't have to follow any racetrack. In fact, you don't even have to follow roads. 
If you see a checkpoint in the distance, you can follow a road there, or you can just try to drive straight there as the crow flies, crashing your way through trees, bushes, jumps, rocks, whatever. The more you play the game, the more you'll find your own shortcuts. It's that kind of game, and has a very arcade-style driving feel, very similar to Burnout. I would say that if you like arcade-style driving games, if you like Burnout, if you like those ATV and motocross kind of games, this one is tailor-made for you. If you're looking for something more like Dirt or Gran Turismo or Forza or a hardcore simulation driving game, obviously this one is pretty far-fetched. The game is very well made and fun, it's just the title is so misleading. It's published by Codemasters, so the first thing you think of is Dirt and Grid, and when I plopped the game in my Xbox and started playing it, I was completely surprised. And was wondering why, why am I driving around the Planet of the Apes when I thought I was going to be in some kind of rally race in a Subaru. But I think once you figure it out and figure out the gameplay and understand that it, the menus are really confusing at first, but once you figure all that stuff out and what you're supposed to do in the different base camps, the whole thing comes together and is, it is enormous and fun. But the title, I think they should have called it something like Death Race 6000X or something like that. Fuel just isn't the right title for the game. There's numerous 80s heavy metal bands that have titles that would have been better. Dokken. That would have fit this game perfectly, and they could have licensed the music. To be honest with you, I like the game, but I kind of prefer Dirt. If this game had only been called Quiet Riot. <laughs>